My name is Sandy Williams IV, and the show is called Genesis Amnesia Part 1. I started the earliest work is 2017 in this show, and the most recent is 2021. It took those years to kind of like figure out what the work was really trying to do, but I guess this is the first time having an opportunity to really like tie that all together in a way that represented it well. So the Wax Monuments started in 2017, but 2020, you know, monuments really became... It, it was a conversation that was hot for a minute when I started because of the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville where Heather Heyer is killed or over a monument, essentially. So it was definitely on my mind. What about these monuments is worth dying over? And then, like, it sort of dulled, and then this past summer, it came right back into focus. I don't think I could have predicted that the monuments would come down in 2020. It seemed like such a stagnant conversation, like so um, boarded up behind like opaque bureaucracy. The whole conversation was about like re-articulating the statues instead of taking them down or leaving them up. Like um, we're having these town hall meetings to talk about what to do with these monuments. And at the end of the conversation, you know, the mayor's office or whoever is sort of like, well, thanks for all the input, but um, we're actually not going to do anything. Like some of them are federal. It's going to be a lot of work, you know, like you, you can't imagine the paperwork or the millions. So we're just not going to do anything. It was really this moment, I think, in being involved in the conversation where I really felt um, the sort of lack of power or agency that a sort of community might have. So the wax monuments were like a presentation of a little bit of that agency. So it takes this form that's untouchable and makes it, you know, malleable, makes it touchable, makes it plural, you know, this like singular object that is in turn gains all of this sort of reverence. To pluralize that thing or to multiply it and distribute it, yeah, I think the luggage does that in a way too, or sort of works on that line of tension where they're both like so transparent in their sort of like disarmed nature, um, but at the same time really sitting on the line of this sort of cultural representation of the terror and violence that like um, exists all around us, you know, exists in like the commemoration of war heroes and in the open carry nature of like our, especially Virginia, um, we're like, always walking this, that, that sort of tension of effigy and memorial, I guess, where like things are both sacred and so sacrilegious. And I, I see a lot of signifiers in it too. Like, it's not just about, you know, the like timer that references like the, the action movie bomb. It's also about the luggage, right? And that culture of like travel and leisure. I think like it's trying to locate in the mundane, like the, the leisure of vacation, um, that sort of terror and violence that it's built on top of, that we're constantly trying to forget in, in that practice of travel. Praise your mother, ama la mama. I get it from my mama. Even the wax monuments in their own sense, they're, I think, also trying to, like as much talk about the past as like create gestures towards the future. Ama la Mama, Praise Your Mother is trying to bring that presence of the feminine into these patri patriarchal systems and establishments. Same thing with I Get It From My Mama, you know, it's this triptych that identifies my matrilineage, but also this lineage of, in this particular instance, you know, horseback riding in Virginia. And I, again, it, so much of the history that is popularized is this sort of equestrian sculpture of you know, Robert E. Lee on a horse um, alluding to a battlefield. When women were riding horses, in my case, for generations, as, as part of the, their daily life and labor. I think labor is often economized, again, in these systems of patriarchy in a way that time equals money. But time also equals so many things. I think that relates a lot to the, the other timers in the room and the monuments and the, you know, the historical 
um, but also very basically in the heartbeat, you know, like time is literally life. I started in all of this time work coming out of chemotherapy really with this heightened awareness of my mortality, I guess, and my, the limited time that I have here on the planet. But I think those heartbeat paintings touch back into that very first, um, just like need to be evident or remembered like in a history. They're grids that I make um, that I spend a certain amount of time sewing within and I record that exact time and then approximate how many times my heart beat in that time, in that labor. Planned obsolescence number two. So it's also within a series of these objects, machine, that I make to fail. I think it again sort of references, references the body as much as the system. So yeah, I add concrete until the pump fails. I record that time and they sort of elaborate on each other, the video and the sculpture, where the sculpture tells you how the video ends and the video tells you how the sculpture came to be. Um, and they collaboratively or in unison sort of speak to the life of this object. I think it definitely has an absurdity to it that a lot of my video work sort of sits on top of. There's sort of like a, a persistence and an absurdity. But I, again, I, I think that echoes back to the world where it, it sort of has both of those things. And, and really was my question, you, you know, coming out of chemo was like, why, like, what does the persistence of a human life in particular really mean? Um, because there's so much absurdity to the, the like practices that we persist through. The objects themselves are the articulation of the ideas that I've had for a while. It's like I have the idea and then it takes me years to really like articulate it in a way that I think can communicate to others. So it's definitely, you know, opened up those pathways into conversations. I've collaborated with Mariana Pariska on Amal Amama, Praise Your Mother. I collaborated with Jack Dorner on the Unattended Baggage series and the first planned obsolescence. The I Get It From My Mama photographs, the photograph of me was taken by Liza Pittard, and Leila Weifer, yeah, wrote the text to, that accompanies the show. I'm not trying to be a hero, I'm trying to like work with other people and learn from other people and like give myself to um, the efforts of others. I don't think it's finished by any means. I think I'm still figuring out where it goes next. Finding those moments of clarity through these conversations and relationships that are really complicated, um, I think it, it gives me a space to do that research and like further my understanding about the world.